Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we are going to discuss how we can solve by factoring. So let's first start by what does it mean to factor something? Well, really what it means to factor something, when you Google it, I mean, to the basic needs, really what we're talking about here is we're trying to produce a divisor. So we are trying to divide a number into its whole divisors. So really what that means is that we have a number like 24 and we're going to rewrite it as being 4 times 6 where 4 and 6 are two of the whole number divisors that we see. This can also happen with polynomials, things like that. Now what does it mean to solve something? Well when we're talking about solving something, when it comes to terms of a polynomial, what it means is we are going to set our polynomial equal to 0 and then try to figure out what x values make that true? And the reason why what x makes it true. And the reason why we want to do it this way is because when we get a term where x equal where the whole thing equals zero, what happens is that actually becomes a factor in the sense that we have a remainder of zero there. And that's so important because when we're talking about these factors, what they do is they actually tell us where does the function cross our x or y axis or hit it. And so we want to use these factors here to help us determine or solving this to help us determine what does a graph look like? Where can I find those zeros and our zeros can be so helpful in figuring out where things change, what they do, stuff like that. And so what we want to do is use factoring to solve something. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to factor it into its smallest pieces and then use those pieces and set them each equal to zero. Now, why can we set them equal to zero? Well, because any number times zero is zero. And so if we break down our factors and make this zero, then the whole thing has to be zero. Or if we find a value of x that makes this piece zero, the whole thing has to be zero. And finding something that makes a part or a factor of a polynomial equal to zero is a lot easier than finding a number that makes the whole thing equal to zero immediately. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's solve this equation here. So what I'm going to do to solve this equation is factor just like we always do. So I'm going to do that by factoring out our greatest common factor, which is 2x. And I end up getting x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now, as we end up having our polynomial here, what we can do is we then want to figure out what is this going to factor into. So we can look at those factors and we can say I need a number that multiplies to 9 and adds to negative 6. And that turns out to be negative 3 and negative 3. So this becomes 2x times x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals zero. So then what we want to ask ourselves is what x values do I need to put in here to make this equal zero? And I can figure that out by t putting this part equal to zero, putting this part equal to zero, and putting this part equal to zero. And whatever x values I get out will tell us what we have. So 2x equals zero. Well, that means that x equals zero. When x minus three equals zero, we can solve for x and we end up getting that x equals three. And when x minus 3 equals 0, we can solve for x and end up getting x equals 3. Now, when we get two times of an x equals, we call that a multiplicity. And that multiplicity just tells us that we get x equals 3 more than one time. In this case, we get it a multiplicity of two times. And depending on the number of times that we get it, that actually tells us what the graph looks like. So when we have a multiplicity of 2, that means it's going to bounce and hit it. When we have a multiplicity of three, it means it's going to come down, get a little bit straight, and then keep going. A multiplicity of four comes down, goes a little straight, and then gets wider. Just depending on what that multiplicity is, our function will change a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at solving some of these other equations here. So let's solve this equation. So we want to figure out what happens when this equals zero. So I'm going to factor on a, and we get a squared minus 4a plus 4 equals 0. We can factor out our 4 and our negative 4. Our special pair here is negative 2 and negative 2. So we get a times a minus 2 times a minus 2. And when we do this, that equals 0. And we end up getting that a equals 0. a minus 2 equals 0, which means that a equals 2. And a minus 2 equals 0, which implies that a equals 2. So again, in this case, we have that multiplicity. 
of two when we have that a equals two there. Okay, let's take a look at one more example where we're gonna solve that equation. Now, in this case, notice how it's not equal to zero. In order to solve an equation, it has to be equal to zero. So I'm actually gonna move this 32 to the other side in order to make that the case. Now, there's no other constants over here, so nothing combines. So we get v cubed minus 2v squared minus 16v plus 32 equals zero. Okay, now let's solve this equation by factoring. I'm going to use grouping because there are four pieces here. The most in common here is a v squared, and then we get v minus 2. The most in common here is a negative 16, and we end up getting v minus 2. And then we can factor that out, and we get v minus 2 times v squared minus 16. Now notice how this piece is not factored completely. This is actually a difference of squares. So we can keep going. We get v minus two, v plus four, and v minus four equals zero. So if that's the case, then let's figure out what values for v will work. So v minus two equals zero. So that means that v has to equal two, v plus four equals zero, which means that, that has, v has to equal negative four, and v minus four equals zero, which means that v equals four. Now, these numbers are so important because they tell us really important pieces about our function. Now, what do they tell us? Well, let's take a look at why does this solving matter? Well, in this case, what I wanna do is solve this equation, and then I'm gonna use the equation that I solve to then graph it. So let's go ahead and take a look here at what happens when we solve this. Now, this one, notice, is one of those polynomials in quadratic form. So to factor this out, we're going to start by factoring out our greatest common factor, which I'm going to factor out as a negative 2, and I get x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 16. And then we're going to factor this like it's a polynomial or a trinomial, where we have a 16 and a negative 8, and that's going to be negative 4 and negative 4. And we end up getting negative 2 is x squared minus 4, and x squared minus 4. Now, what does this x squared minus 4 tell us that it does? Well, actually, what this tells us is these two can continue factoring out, and we end up getting negative 2 times x plus 4 times x minus 4, because that's a difference of square. And so with that one, x plus 4, x minus 4. Now, notice how we have these two sets that are the same. That means we're going to have a multiplicity of 2 on each of those. And so as we get that multiplicity, what the multiplicity does, again, is it tells us how it's going to look. So if it's a multiplicity of 2, it's going to bounce. If it's a 3, it's going to kind of settle and then go down. If it's a 4, it's going to settle and then bounce back up. So let's figure out what this one's going to do and where it's going to do that at. So let's solve for this. So x plus 4 equals 0 means that we have an x equals negative 4 x minus 4 equals 0 means that we have an x equals 4, and x plus 4 equals 0 means that we have an x equals negative 4, and our x minus 4 equals 0 means that we have an x equals 4. So because I have two x equals 4s, and I have two x equals negative 4s here, we can see that with this one and this one, both of those have a multiplicity of 2. And that multiplicity of 2 tells us what it's going to look like, and that's going to be a bounce. So I know on a graph here that I would have a point at negative 4. I would also have a point at 4. And because this is a degree 4, we know that it's going to look something like this of some kind. Now, we can use our polynomial here to decide where it's going to cross our y-axis and things like that at that negative 32. But what we are going to look at here is kind of what it does. And in this case, it's going to go down and bounce, or it's going to start down like this because it's a negative. It's going to start down. It's going to bounce. It comes way down here, and then it's going to bounce again at 4. Okay, and so it's really cool that we can actually solve these equations by factoring and then figure out what the graph looks like just based on what we figured out. So in this case, we know it's going to cross our y-axis here at our y-intercept, and it's going to bounce at those two places. So let's take a look at two more examples of what these are going to look like when we find those zeros. And again, zeros is just another fancy way of saying solve this polynomial here. So we want to set it equal to 0, negative x to the third, minus 2x squared, plus 15x. I'm going to factor out a negative x. So 0 equals a negative x times x squared plus 2x plus 15. We can look at that 
15 and 2. What two numbers? Oh, negative 2. Negative 15. Ooh, that's, that's a mistake. Negative 15. What two numbers multiply to negative 15 and add to 2? Well, that's going to be 5 and negative 3. So then this factors into negative x, x plus 5, and x minus 3. Now when we're solving, remember, we're going to set those equal to 0. So negative x equals 0, which means that x equals 0. x plus 5 equals 0, which means that x equals negative 5. And x minus 3 equals 0, which means that x equals 3. Okay, so then as we're designing our graph here, we know some important things. First of all, because there is no constant or plus 0, I know it's going to cross right here at 0. That's where it's going to cross our y-axis, and we can see that with this x equals 0 component here. We also know it's going to cross at negative 5, and it's going to cross at 3. Now, where does it start? Well, if the first number is negative, it's going to start from the bottom. If the first number is positive, it'll start from the top. Kind of like think of what happens with those quadratics. If it's a negative, it looks like a frowny face. If it's a positive, it looks like a smiley face. So it starts at the bottom if it's negative. It starts at the top if it's positive. So in this case, we'll go up. Because it's 3, that means we'll go up. We'll come down. And we'll go back up. Now, this isn't going to be the most accurate on how high or low those maximums or minimums are, but it will tell us a rough idea of what our shape looks like, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at one last one here. Now, this one we are going to solve by grouping. So I'm going to group here x minus x to the third minus 5x squared is grouped, and then our, oh, our negative 4x plus 20 is grouped. And so then we're going to factor out that greatest common factor. In this case, we're going to get an x squared, and that's going to be x minus 5. And in this case, we'll factor out a negative 4, and we'll get x minus 5. So then we end up getting x minus 5 times x squared minus 4. But x squared minus 4, we know, simplifies or factors again, and that becomes x minus 5. That difference of squares tells us it's going to be an x plus 2 and an x minus 2. So what does that mean when it comes to our zeros or our solutions? Well, x minus 5 equals 0 means that I have a number at x equals 5. x plus 2 equals 0 means that we have an x at negative 2. And x minus 2 equals 0 means that I have an x at 2. So then as we are graphing this, we know that we'll have a number here at 5. We'll have one at 2 we'll have one at negative 2. This positive 20 tells us that it's actually going to cross our graph way up here at positive 20. And because we have a positive for our very first number, we know it's going to come down. We know that it's going to start here, and it's going to go up, down, just like this. So we get those three. Now that n term right here, our constant, is really what's going to help clue us in on which way it's going to face. But that also helps us as well. So as we're looking at what it does, we can take that into account. So if you have any questions on how we can solve by factoring, feel free to reach out. But that's what we're going to do. That's how we can solve for factoring and use those solutions to then draw, sketch a graph of what we have, um, of what the polynomial function would look like.